Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the recent discoveries in regards to asteroids in the solar system. And more specifically, the peanut-shaped asteroid known as Electra that you see right here, along with the discovery of what seems to be the youngest asteroid in the solar system at only roughly around 300 years old, with both discoveries coming from several different studies. And so let's actually discuss this in more detail, because all of this really shows us how extremely diverse asteroids are in the solar system, and how little we still know about them. So first of all, when it comes to this uh, asteroid known as Electra, this is obviously not a new asteroid. It was originally discovered back in the middle of 19th century. As a matter of fact, it was the 130th asteroid discovered, and was relatively easily visible because of its total size. It's approximately 190 to maybe 200 kilometers across. So this is a pretty large rock. But it wasn't really until more recently, specifically the last few decades, that the scientists started to find new things about it. For example, the fact that its shape is somewhat irregular. It's been described as a kind of a peanut shape. And these peanut shaped asteroids are usually believed to be a product of two different asteroids slowly combining into one over time. Essentially as they orbit around one another and come closer and closer together. And this is exactly how Erekoth explored by the New Horizons probe, was most likely produced as well. And this is actually not something that's surprising, because in the past scientists have discovered quite a lot of asteroids either becoming binary by basically separating from one another, as we'll discuss in a few minutes, or by turning a binary system into a single asteroid, making it somewhat peanut shape. But what is strange about this asteroid is something that was discovered back in 2003. As you can see in this simulation right here, it seems to possess a moon. And then, in 2014, it was discovered that it was actually two moons. So this was already pretty strange. Here's roughly what their orbits around the asteroid look like, with these images from the European Southern Observatory providing us with some of the highest detail we have so far. And so it took approximately 130 years since the original discovery of this asteroid to find its first moon, and then it took approximately 11 years to find the second, and then it took approximately 8 years to find the third it seems to have three moons, with the latest moon being the closest in its orbit, and all three moons being relatively small in size. For example, the farthest moon here is only approximately 6 kilometers across, with the average distance between the moon and the asteroid being approximately 1300 kilometers. The second moon is even smaller, it's about 2 kilometers across, and is also a little bit closer, orbiting at a distance of about 500 kilometers. And the third moon is the smallest and the closest. It's about 1.6 kilometers across, and it seems to be orbiting at a distance of just 340 kilometers away from the moon. Officially making Electra the first ever quadruple asteroid, or the first ever asteroid possessing three moons. But interestingly here, all of the data was actually still from that older observation back in 2014, which is why its name is also 2014 with all of this conducted by the SPHERE instrument, part of the European Southern Observatory. And it's actually using modern data analysis techniques that the scientists were able to sort of rediscover this moon in the older data. And so because it's so close to Electra and because it's so small, it's just kind of difficult to see it otherwise. But in this particular case, this discovery also sort of presents us with a new mystery. How did these moons form? For example, in the past, some of the studies suggested that some of these moons can be produced if the asteroid starts spinning fast enough and some of the chunks from the sides, for example, start to fly out and become their own objects. And this is actually something that's not impossible because, over time, the pressure from the Sun can actually accelerate an asteroid to some really high velocities. We usually refer to this as Yarkovsky effect. And this is an effect I explained in one of the older videos, and it basically causes the asteroids to spin at different velocities. The video, as always, should be somewhere right there or in the description below. And so it was originally assumed that the two moons here might have been produced in this way. But now it's not certain, because the third moon seems to have its own orbit that's a little bit different. And because that closest moon seems to orbit around the asteroid in just about 0.7 days, it's a lot more likely that a lot of these moons were created by possible collisions with the asteroid, with something basically hitting the surface and ejecting some of the rocks, putting them in orbits that they have today. Here's, by the way, what the most accurate image of the asteroid system looks like, and this is what the scientists recently created in their study. But now we also have this other discovery, somewhat unusual discovery, from a different pair of asteroids. The asteroids with the names you see right here. 
And in this particular case, what makes this discovery unusual is the fact that these asteroids seem to be the youngest asteroids in the solar system, formed approximately 300 years ago. And in this case, as the name of the asteroid suggests, both of them were discovered in 2019, and they were actually discovered completely separately. In this case, discovered by the Pan-STARRS located in Hawaii. And when the scientists originally discovered these asteroids, they realized that this was a binary system, with the larger asteroid being approximately one kilometer across, and the smaller partner being approximately half the size, about 500 meters. And although at first the scientists were kind of surprised to see that their orbits were also somewhat eccentric, what surprised them the most is the recent discovery that they seem to possess extremely similar properties, like to the point of being the same object implying that they most likely came from the same parental body and very likely were just broken up pieces from an asteroid that was spinning too fast. And after simulating their orbits, the scientists discovered that all of this most likely happened approximately 270 years ago. And although it could be because of the Yarkovsky effect, which causes the asteroids to spin faster, in this particular case the scientists believe it could be because this was some sort of a cometary object with the original comet very likely having a lot of outgassing that sort of pushed the asteroids apart, but also having a somewhat eccentric orbit, explaining why they orbit in such a strange way. Although at the moment there is still no good explanation for how all of this sort of took place. How exactly did these particular asteroids, which don't actually have any cometary properties today, became what they are, and how did they separate from that original body that might have been in orbit approximately 300 years ago? But because their next close approach to planet Earth is going to be in 2033, it will allow the scientists to look at them in more detail and possibly find some of the answers to these unusual asteroids. Although I guess for now that's pretty much it. A lot of really exciting discoveries, a lot of really unusual discoveries and some new mysteries, but more importantly this definitely helps us understand how various asteroids and various comets evolve and change over time and what they end up producing at the end, especially because of the powerful effects from our Sun. But once we learn more or once something else is discovered about these asteroids, or once I guess the fourth moon of Electra is discovered, we'll come back and talk about this again. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful printed t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.